Welcome, friends, to the brand new episode of Smoke em If You Got Em. Pretty simple concept of this podcast. We're listening to an album, side A and side B. Here's the deal. You're going to roll one. You're going to smoke it up. Smoke them if you got them, right? We're going to listen to side A. Come back and talk to us a little bit about it. Do the same thing for side B. Now, for today's record selection, I turn the microphone over to the Oracle of Oxford County, Jeremiah Charles. Yes, folks, today we are listening to Winter Songs by the band Art Bears. Mm-hmm. And um, we're in for a little wonderful time today, folks. I so, think so. Too. Yes, yes. Let's, let, let's, let's not even let, let them wait any longer. Let's just go on this journey together. Yeah, check up uh, Art Bears Winter Song. Uh, Find and it. Join us. For side A. Smoke it. Come back. Put the phone down. You know the rules, guys. Get into the music. This is easy. All right. So the first chord on side A that is held for a little too long with the apocalyptic vocals and the dissonance (laughs) making a beautiful song. (laughs) Makes this an instant, an instant love affair. Instant classic for you. Um, th- this is this this I uh, I couldn't. Um, Have you heard any art bears before? I've I've heard uh, I've heard three or four clips of things via YouTube. Okay. Anything um, anything anything I off saw, this album or no? I saw them. Uh, the twenty twenty uh, twenty but easy for me to see. 2010 reunion uh, and I heard them uh, play like basically the B-side I'm looking at the, at the discography and, and, and the information I saw it I was like okay uh, I was not ready for this A-side at all my mind has been in other places this is the coolest collection of random pieces of uh, music made uh, with a lot of uh, care it is songwriting but the instrumentation is uh on the fringe uh the playing is almost broadway-esque and um it's just a different thing it's alice in wonderland coming through you um and that that's that's as clear as i can put it now this is an english album isn't it well halfway you got uh the drummer and the guitarist are english the singer's uh german Dagmar okay kraus okay and she's there from, you go. She's from and a then, band uh, uh, called Slap Happy. I was going to say, I know her from that. Uh, the rest of the personal here is Fred Firth, obviously, which you'll talk about in depth a little bit, and Chris Cutler. This album um, is the definition of art rock, avant-garde rock. It It is, you've never heard anything like this, but it still rocks super hard. A selection of short songs that are highly composed and not traditional by any means. What's interesting to me is the um, compared to other albums we've done, we've got gone through. This one uh, really is songs like you're saying. They're not really. It's not like a uh, together. It's not like a. These are. They're not connected. You know, like which is cool because we because we've been we we've been very much on that journey so far musically. Yeah, we're we're talking about we're talking about songs that are like at the most whatever tops the dial might be three minutes. So com- thinking about that versus what we've done where it's like 24, 40 minutes aside, whatever. Um, these are actual songs, and again, they super rock. Um, the album is uh, the year of the album release, please. Okay, so 1979, album. it is in your album. face. It's a second yeah. album. It's super in your face. It Did sounds you enjoy her vocals? massive. I love the vocals. I love the violin. Um, I, I love everything about these damn songs, you know? What I'm hearing here reminds me of Henry Cow, reminds me of... It it just reminds me of so many things at the same time because even it reminds me of Jimi Hendrix too. Um, is there a standout track for you on side A? Um, yes, there was. There was a guitar solo on side A. 
I gotta try to remember what um, song it was on, but there is a, a solo on Side A that is just so nuts. It's so good. For me, while well, you think about the name uh, Rats and Monkeys, no? remember, Rats remember, and remember, Monkeys is story my soul. I think solo? you're talking about. I'm looking at my notes here. I think you're talking about track number four. Okay. It's the summer wheel. There's a break in the middle that's like a very, um, yeah, it's an interesting solo pass through, but the music is so big that this is one of the things that I, I had to say. Like, this is the first album that we've heard for me that I haven't been able to differentiate parts because it's a, it's a sonic collection. Did you, did you it's like an abuse um... in your ears? The drumming. I I love the drumming, but again, I can't really differentiate the instruments. To me, everything comes out at the same time, you know. So everybody's really connected in the music, uh, and I think that's why Rats and Monkeys stood out the mo- the most to me. If there was a punk song that these guys would have done in '79 in Switzerland, uh, it would be this song. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, you know? I think it was the Summer Wheel. Yeah, where... the Summer Wheel. It's right smack down yeah. the middle. Sort of like uh, um, overdriven feedback solo. Complete fuzz. Complete fuzz. It sounds like it's stabbed through the so, speaker. Yeah, I love that one. That's a great solo. It's probably the best guitar solo that we've listened to so far. I agree. I, and at the same time, it's in a song that's, you know, a minute. Uh, I want to say a minute. It's maybe like two minutes, three minutes tops. Which is a big departure from what we've heard. I'm a big I'm a big uh, Chris Cutler so fan. Um, he's a drummer from Henry Cow and obviously Fred Frith from Henry Cow. What do you What do you like about uh, What do you like about him the best? Uh, well, c- because I find that um, he has a little bit of the avant garde, like the jazz avant garde sensibilities. Right. He's got that little bit of Milford Graves thing to the playing he has modern jazz ensemble all over right him. he has a little bit of that and he has a little bit of um yeah. oh gosh the guy from uh captain v farts band the original drummer oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah the, uh, it feels and i call that uh having to prove yourself drumming where the people are great players but every track they're just we're, they're going for it you know Drumbo, um, Drumbo. Can't believe I couldn't remember. Drumbo. There you go. Yeah, he has a little bit of Drumbo. Drumbo is, Drumbo is like complexly way harder shit, but Chris Cutler has a little bit more like ability to improvise. He's, he's got like, bravado, more, man. He's got bravado. Well, he's not, like there's a little bit more improvisation in that band too. You know, yeah. so. But there's a lot of musicality all over the side, by the way. You know, um, I, 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 I can't stress enough how important that first chord, the opening a lot of sound dissonance, that comes a lot of out dissonance, of the folks. A-side. But the moment that e- there's a second, folks, after 30 seconds that everything falls into place and your body kind of goes with the frequency and you get on a journey. Um, I do want to talk about the artwork here because I think it's really important before we even get to the second mm-hmm. side. Uh, the artwork reminded me a lot of Lizard by yep. Crimson. And um, that era of, um, you know, that era of of, of artwork, um, it's it's really cool because I was looking around. It's a bit deceiving for... because it's pretty happy album cover. You, you, you think this is like a nice. Uh... I was expecting a Canterbury yeah. record. And uh, it's not that at all. It's like a John Anderson solo record, um, but no. Oh, Thank Mark Krause. I love a little bit, Anderson, little bit, but yeah, it's a rough around. I think it's she's a different, the, it's a different dividing thing. line. A lot of people do not enjoy her vocals. I, I don't mind them. I, I like them. I like her vocals a lot, but I like Lily Lunch too. So you know, um, all these tracks were composed by Fred Firth and Chris Cutler. Um, if you can describe a little bit about Fritz's work, how would you, how would you describe it? Very guitar player. Fred Firth is one of the best guitar players of all time because, um. He's not conventional. He can, he can go all the way from making sounds, um, very avant-garde, and very well, and very like and, and, and lots of prepared guitar. He he, he go that yeah. way to composing pretty 
complex modern classical music. <laughs> so that yeah, and all and all at a at a high yeah, level. Yeah, he's a really good improviser himself. Yeah. Uh I think he's now there's a lot of guys like that sort of like come out of that group um post the post Derek Bailey guys, Keith Rowe, post Derek Bailey Keith Rowe. will be all these names you guys should be running. Be the original down. um sort of avant-garde out guitar players. But if you've heard of Henry Kaiser, Elliot yeah. Sharp, all these people that sort of came after Fred Fritz, you, a, a, you know, one of those guys, uh, Eugene Chadbourne, yeah. I'm putting there too. To there me, I think Fred Frith um, can play the he he can play a bunch of different styles, but um, yeah. play uniquely in them. So not necessarily a chameleon, you know. what I'm saying like. But my point is, if, if the song yeah. is pretty, Fred Frith can make it pretty. But he's not going to make it conventionally pretty like how no, most normal guitar players would. Yeah, I, and I would say, and I would say that most of his work with uh, groups also reflects that. Oh, I played with so many people. We didn't even talk about that. So, so the so the music, so the music for Art Bears to bring it back, since we're talking about uh, the 1979 release, uh, Winter Songs. Um, I think one of the coolest things about these uh, short real legit like songs was that they are challenging yeah, always you know they're they're idiosyncratic yeah. you know there's uh there's uh there's there's some difficulty to them but there's a turning point that you find yourself tapping your toe uh because you you fall into place and you break your own programming which is the challenging but beautiful part about uh music that is made with this ridiculous genre of calling it something but <laughs> just people making music that is not you know a couple of chords and a ooh baby ooh baby chorus as much as i like that this is a different sometimes sort of you don't uh, want exploration sometimes you need to not hear that so you find so you find coolness back in like simple well, let, let's find some more coolness um, than on side two yeah let's let's go to the so you know the rules the folks don't don't tell please them don't uh wuss out here on us don't wuss out pick it up again Pick it up, smoke them if you got them. Get that second side in you. Come back. We're gonna talk about it. Finish it up. So smoke if you got them, folks. Okay. And uh, we're back with Winter Songs, the 1979 second Correct. album for the Art Bears. Um, this record strong, strong was uh, strong record. I'll I'll st- I'll stand by what I said before. Challenging, uh, unapologetic, bold, um, super rewarding to get through. This record was recorded and mixed in fourteen mm. days, and um, that's no easy feat. Um, the songs on the B side are so hardcore. A little little bit more um, um, darker than the first side. Yeah, but in a different way, we're still not, I mean, it's not by any means, is it a recall to the artwork here, uh, <laughs> feeling beautiful and sunny and outside pastures and through through regal arches. It's not. It's, Griffin. Not. it's not, it's not at all. Um, it, it's, it's more complex, still sort I mean, it's still very much song oriented, yep. right? Uh, it's there it's but but yeah the concept does get a little bit darker on the b side uh because there's no actual uh, like real words right mm-hmm. it sounds um i think it plays on to that thing that we've talked about before we've spoken about before where you get to choose what's happening and so i feel if the discomfort comes out it comes out because of your own transgressions i feel like it's like the drone because there's it's like no the real drone words yeah well it's the equivalent of the yep. drone right it just it hits you in a in a it hits you in a much more animal it hits the brain in a different way okay sound gets divided in three parts folks three parts for there to be a connection emotionally the inner ear reacts the drone affects the muscle and the canal this vocal this dark atmosphere affects the same exact thing in a different way because your whole brain rattles this so, is why we talk about you know, putting the phone down, paying attention. Because a lot of, time, yeah, a lot of times when, co- when you come across music that you're not like used to or you find a little strange, like most people 
they escape it. Easy to turn right? off. So they're they're gonna pick it up and they're gonna go search something, sort of like avoid it. And sort of, you know. Oh, please, something that feels good quickly. So, uh, this one again, I think it's her voice is is the big, big uh, um, turn off for most people. Da- Dag, I Dag think those tough. people are fucking well, idiots right. because true. there's a real there's a real beauty in that and and uh, uh, if you if you don't like that you don't like you know, Callas if you don't like that you don't like Montserrat Caballé if you don't like that you don't like Lydia Lunch if you don't you know what what you need to do is smoke a fatter Correct. one and come back to it at a different time because you're doing it the yeah. wrong way okay. This this record is one of those records with the side one, side two, as they named it. Um, this is one of those albums that should be completely learned as a songbook and played. Um, because it's powerful, it's super hip, and uh, it's undeniable. You know? I, again, to create these concepts in a song-oriented, like, challenging musical way, not just noise for the sake of noise, right? Right. That's a different. That's a different I ball agree. game. Um. So this band is under the classification, the subgenre of uh, rock and opposition. Oh, interesting. Um, have you ever heard that term before? Please, please tell me more. So, I've read it, but I don't. Okay, know enough, so, so the rock ahead. and the rock and opposition. Was like it, it, it's funny that they call it that because it's basically just like progressive rock bands that were in different countries that were basically too weird to be <laughs> in another progressive rock bands. That's and so nice. they figured, well, if we get them together, like so, the the, the original bands were uh, Henry Cow, Universe Zero, uh, Etron, Fuda Le Bon, Samla Mamas Mama, Beautiful. and Stormy Six. Right, and so Henry. That sounds like a hell of a party, by the way. This is some of the best bands of all time. So, uh, um, that's the original bands, and then and then Art Zoid, Art Bears, and Axak Mobul joined later. That was that was nice. incredible. original bands. Uh, again, Henry Cow from England, Universe Zero, Belgium, uh, Efron. Uh, I'm sorry, Etron Fou Le Bon, France, Sandless Manus Manus, Sweden, Stormy Six, Italy. They figured if they all get together and they um, they can do a little tour of Europe, you know, like they nice. just built every you're going to push their local show as much as they can, and that's how they did it, right? And make it make it a package deal like old Motown reviews and get that was the that was the goal. Anyways, they they, they had yeah. a fe- yeah, they had yeah, a yeah. festival. Um, and set and did it work out? Well, I'm sure it was great. Okay. Well, I'm sure it was great too. I wish I, uh, I wish I was there. I don't know how many people were there, <laughs> but those those, I, I those bet, are all some of the hippest bands of all time. Like like, I bet you most of those people started bands that night as the old Sex Pistols. Too. You know, like, like was, honestly, yeah. like I would I would say we will do all of those bands at one time. I feel I feel comfortable enough for that because this album uh, definitely like. Definitely drives us to to experiencing more of the rock and opposition movement. I, the, first of all, props on the name. Come on, correct. Rock and opposition. That's such a good one. But but we're not here to talk about rock and opposition right now. Well, we, are, about we, are, we are. We are. We are because we're talking about art. Bar- we're talking art bears, and they and and the the, the this, founders are Chris Cutler is the fa- founder of rock and opposition. He's the drummer. There you go. So okay. um, the last thing I want to tell you about that. What's interesting was again, as you know. Especially back then, the the record business was so mm, big companies, you know, and their subsidiaries, right? Yeah. Uh, and there was a lot of them compared to now. There's only like a couple, but it still was big, big, big record companies, and it was very hard to be a true independent artist, right? Yeah. Like you could have your own independent, but you were again getting pushed by whatever Mercury or whoever, right? So like mm-hmm. Sun Ra was one of the first guys. Mingus was one of the first guys too. This is in jazz. We're talking above your heads now, folks. But Rock and Opposition was one of the first groups that were like, fuck it, we're going to put out our own albums on top of everything else, Thanks. right? So, yeah, see, that's 
it's always cool. about the people that have the most amount of creativity that are the hippest that just Correct. go, you know what? I don't, uh, you know, that reminds me of, uh, of, uh, people like magma and, uh, sleepy time gorilla museum. Those, tr- but they're just like, we're just going to keep on putting stuff mm-hmm. out and whatever happens happens. If it sticks, it sticks. If it doesn't, we're just doing what, what we're doing. You know? Yeah. And, and, and Fritz um, is like, he's been in, he's like in, um, uh, uh, Mills college in San Francisco. Like he's been a guitar head guitar instructor over there for quite a while. Well, you know, he can do whatever the hell he wants. He's a challenging fellow that can really uh, bring good, it. But as I look good, at the time, uh, he'd be a good, uh, guitar uh really good one he'd be a good guitar instructor for college you know i would love for him to tell me how to prepare some of those guitars he was one of the wackiest crazy most cool prepared guitars like what ever. if he didn't know like that, that's a let's 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 go let the fans have a little little little, little uh thought process go with us here you're um you're a 18 year old guitar kid and you know like obviously in high school you, you're most likely you're going to be in the jazz band right so mm-hmm. like you you probably most guitar player now it's different these days right because I'm older now so but I'll, let's let's assume let's go back to my I'll just talk about if it was me so you're most likely like a sort of metal semi shredder but then they then they force you to go to the jazz band right so like you learn a couple of chords yeah. and like you you halfway do a jazz solo and then and then you you make it to this Mills College and so like you're thinking oh I'm gonna play like west montgomery man and then like your guitar teacher is fred frith and he has the guitar on a fucking table hitting it with uh chopsticks and uh rocks and rubber uh, mallets and guitar sticks you can find me in that class (laughs) so happy to be there so happy why did i learn all these chords (laughs) <laughs> and then and then and then fred fifth just looks at you and starts laughing yeah. hysterically yeah. well uh this was a great record to listen to i uh i you know great job great job for uh for today thank you very much um but as i look at the time, time to go it's time to get the hell out of here so folks Smoke if you got them tomorrow we'll catch you on the flip side peace peace